we are now ready to look at some other ways of solving or approximating the Navier-Stokes equation. So, so far we have seen um, the simplified method that um, reduces the problem into some type of uh, Couette or Poiseuille type flow, flow problem or a combination of both. Um, from uh, he, in the next few lectures, we will be looking at dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis. And this typically takes um, two forms application of dimensional analysis to the governing equations. Governing equations. So, what that does, you, r you end up writing the equations in dimensionless form, dimensionless, dimensionless form, and using the proper scaling, you can compare the different terms in the equations, um, assuming that they're balanced or equal, and then you, and then naturally certain parameters, um, certain combination of parameters show up and that will tell you how the flow behaves in different regimes where, for example, at high Reynolds numbers or low Reynolds numbers, what terms can you neglect in the governing equations? And secondly, applies into um, scaling and dimensionless grouping and dimensionless, dimensionless grouping. So that's the infamous um, Buckingham Pi theorem to help you identify what combination um, of terms and parameters matter for a given problem or a given experiment. Now before, before we embark on this journey, I want to give you a simple example um, that illustrates the power of this method and um, how useful it can be. And we're going to start with the example of um, someone throwing a ball. Um, there's a ball at a given height, let's say um, Z0, subject to gravity G, minus 9.81. And that ball is being thrown upward at an initial um, velocity W0. And the question is, um, find the trajectory of this ball. Um, and then if you apply Newton's law, you get the familiar equation d to z by dt squared equal minus g for the um, height of the uh, of the ball with respect to the ground okay and the initial condition here z at t equals zero is equal to z zero and dz by dt at zero is equal to w zero now by all means, we can solve this exactly. So you do one integration, dz by dt, that gives you minus gt plus c1. And then one more integration, and you get minus 1 over 2 gt squared plus c1t plus c2. And then you apply um, initial conditions. z0 is equal to... To, so you get 0 here plus C2 is equal to C0, so therefore C2 is C0. And dz by dt at t equals 0, this gives, you my, uh, this gives you C1, and that's equal to W0, because dz by dt is minus gt. So therefore, the solution, z of t, dimensional, this is in meters, okay? is equal to minus 1 over 2 g t squared plus w0 t plus z0. Now, that's completely fine. And assuming um, uh, you have no control over gravity, um, well, technically, um, this equation would apply on in any gravitational field. Okay, so... Um, specifically, you, would ha you have three parameters that you can control here. You have G, you have W0, and Z0. So those are three parameters, and you're computing one dependent variable, and you have one independent variable. But you have three parameters, okay? Three 
parameters. So if you were to understand how this equation behaves, you would go and specify g and specify w0 and then change z and make a plot. And then you would go and fix g and z0 and change w0 and make another plot. And you would go fix w0, z0 and change g and make a plot. So you, you would end up with hundreds of plots just to try to get an idea of um, how uh, the, the motion of the ball behaves. Um, but however, um, there is a much um, easier way of interpreting this data, and, and that is through dimensional anal analysis. And we're going to do this directly on the governing equation itself, um, um, not through grouping for this problem, because I want to start talking um, uh, by talking about um, this set here. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to non-dimensionalize this equation. Let's start a new page and write it again, D. 2z by dt squared equal minus g with initial conditions z0 equals z0 and dz by dt at 0 equal w0. And I'm going to introduce um, so, uh, new scales that are dimensionless. I'm going to say t star equal t over some characteristic scale t0. So seconds over seconds, that would um, be dimensionless. And I'm going to introduce another scale for length, the star equals z over some characteristic scale, um, or a length scale. And then we're going to introduce, um, so yeah, that, that, that will be it. That's all we need because uh, we only have one dependent variable and one independent variable. Okay, so we go ahead and substitute um, z is equal to L0 z star and t is equal to T0 t star. So we get um, d2 of um, z0 times z star over d, what is t? Is t0 t star squared is equal to minus g. This implies that z0 over t0 squared d2 z star by dt star equal minus g and I'm going to group all terms together such that t2 z star by dt star equal to minus g t0 squared over z0. Now um, it doesn't take um, Actually, this is L0, so I jumped the gun over here. This should be L0. We don't know what this, scale, we haven't decided what this scale is. Um, so you can easily show that this is actually a dimensionally homogeneous, dimensionless equation. So the units for this one is one, and the units for this term is one. You can verify that, meters per second squared times second squared over meter, I'll cancel out to give one. Okay, but we haven't made much progress yet because we don't know what T0 and what L0 are. And this is where intuition and um, um, experience comes in. And uh, the idea here is you want to pick scales or choose scales that are relevant to the problem, okay? So you're throwing a ball from a height z0. Um, would it make sense to choose the distance between the earth and the sun as the length scale? I mean, you can choose that, but it doesn't make sense, right? It's not gonna um, give you the insight that you want. It doesn't make the equation wrong, absolutely not. You still get um, similar answers, but this combination of numbers is going to be is just going to be different from something that makes sense. So, for example, for the length scale, I want to choose something that makes sense. Uh, length scale, length scale, choose um, L0 equal to Z0. Can we choose 2Z0? Of course. Can we choose 10 and Z0? Yeah, probably. It's not going to make a big difference, but you know, L0 needs to be of the order of something that is characteristic to the problem. Otherwise, your analysis will not make sense. Now, this problem is 
simple enough where um, the choice of the scale doesn't matter that much. But once we get to the Navier-Stokes equations, if you get your scales wrong, then you cannot legitimately compare terms, okay? Now, what about the time scale, t0? Um, could you choose um, t0 as the time it takes light to travel, um, you know, through from the sun to the earth? It's about eight minutes. No, it doesn't make sense. You want t0 to be a representative scale of the system. And typically, um, because in this case we have meters and second, typically um, if you're given the velocity, um, a velocity scale like this one here, we have a velocity scale, which is meters per second, that, and we have a, a, a length scale meters, then we can choose t0 such that it is based on the velocity scale. Okay, so in this case, if we choose L0 over W0, that would give us a characteristic time scale for the system. What is this time scale? It represents um, the time it takes the ball uh, to travel at a speed W0, a length L0. That's essentially what this is. So you can see that this is meters over meters per second, and that's equal to seconds. Okay, so that's a legitimate time scale. Now, if we plug these back in here, what do we get? We get D2Z star by DT star squared equal to minus G. What is T0 squared? It's L0 squared over W0 squared over L0. What is L0? It's Z0. So I'm going to put this as Z0. Okay. So then what we can do here, we can cancel out this guy, cancel out that guy, and we get minus G Z0 over W0 squared. Now what we ended up with is an equation with one dependent variable, one independent variable, just like we started with. However, um, our solution, our right-hand side, depends on a grouping of the terms um, that matter. And I'll show you in the solution, once we write the solution down. One more thing we need to do is non-dimensionalize the initial conditions. So u at 0 equal um, to, sorry, z at 0 equal to z0. Now remember, z is z0 times z star, so this implies that z0 times z star at 0 equal to z0, which implies that z star at 0 equal to 1. So that's the initial condition on z star. And then dz by um, dt at t equals 0 is equal to z0 over t0, dz star by dt star equals to w0. But remember, t0 is z0 over w0. So that gives us z0 over z0 over w0, dz star by dt star equal to w0. And then we can cancel out all of these guys. And then dz star by dt star equal to 1. That's you. And finally, the solution we can get here is z star of t star is equal to minus 1 over 2 g z0 over w0 squared t star squared plus t star plus 1 because the constants are just going to evaluate to 1. Now look at the beauty of this equation. We have reduced um, the um, a, a, a solution that had three independently varying um, parameters into a grouping of parameters that, such that if it's changed, um, you only need to change one number, which is gz0 over w0 squared, um, and then that would land you on a different solution. But this also tells you much more, that if you um, double z0, that has the effect of, that has the um, same effect as um, half, or as taking W0 by over the square root of 2, okay? 
or in other words, if you, also, if you double w0, if you double the speed, and that becomes a 4, that's equivalent to cutting the height by a factor of 4. Now, this particular grouping actually has a name, and that, has to, that name has to do with the Froude number. The Froude number is given by um, w0 over square root of, or u0, some velocity, over square root g l0. And therefore, this guy would be 1 over the Froude number squared. So that's equal to 1 over the Froude number squared. So all you have to do is change the Froude number, and you are going to be able to generate all of these hundreds of plots that we thought about, uh, we thought of doing earlier, because you're fixing g varying z0 and uh, w0. The great thing here is that all of these numbers are combined together, and um, that grouping just lands you on the right curve. You cannot can, uh, uh, repl you can replicate the grouping, but it's going to be smart about it. If you double W0, that's equivalent to cutting G0 by a factor of 4, or cutting the gravity by a factor of 4. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the power of dimensional analysis. Okay, now we could have chosen the scales in another way, but we will end up with the same thing. So one other way to choose the T0 scale is to base it on um, the, the gravity. And that's to say, you know, I want to choose T0 such that this entire term is going to be equal to 1. You do that as an exercise, you'll end up with this combination showing up in the boundary condition for um, um, dz star by dt star. You're going to get the Froude number um, uh, uh, over here, and uh, actually over here, uh, but that still gives you the same character of the equations. You're going to get the same solution for the same Froude number. You're going to get the same, um, uh, you're going to get the same, for the same combination of z0, w0, and g, you're going to get um, the same values from either solution. Okay?